previously on Project Grizzly. Now that Bob and Screech are free roaming, it's important that they learn to live off the land. Come on! Gotta pull it down. Ah, oh, there you go. Get it! Good boy! That's a good boy! Screech is really looking like he's taken to this rewilding project. Hey, Bob! Come on, you're missing dinner, buddy! What is wrong with you? Are you a bear? What's the matter, buddy? Your foot bothering you? But Bob is just lagging back. Guess you guys are starting to get a little independent now, aren't you? We're getting closer to the end of the process, and I know I have to let go of Bob and Screech. You're good boys. I love you. I have to be honest. It's hard letting them go. I'm Jeff Watson. And everybody knows me as the Bear Man. Come on. After handling bears for 27 years, there's something that makes me want to take them to the wild. I rescued Bob and Screech, and I've been raising them since they were six weeks old. They live well, but it's not natural. You're good boys. I love you. Bob, Screech, we're doing it. I love you guys. Everybody give me a hug. Be careful. Look what I got. Yours. Got it. Come on, this is freedom, boy. I don't know if you guys know what you're in for. How about I know what I'm in for? I've been out here in the habitat with Bob and Screech for a month now, and I'm trying to teach them the skills that they'll need to survive on their own, so I can release them into the wilderness in Canada or Alaska. When I first got here, I slept in a tent outside of the habitat, but I decided to go inside the habitat, get up in a tree on a platform, that way I could keep a better eye on them, and I could keep myself safe. It's not four star, but it's, it's pretty nice. I like listening to the birds, I like listening to the frogs, and just hearing Bob and Screech, they snore a little bit, I can hear them when they're out moving around, it's just, uh, it's a very tranquil setting. It just it just makes you one with nature. I love it. So far, I've shown the bears how to fish and how to forage for vegetation. Screech has done great, but Bob's been lagging behind. My next lesson for the bears is to teach them how to hunt for game. If Bob and Screech are ever going to reach the final step in this process of being released into the wild, they're going to have to learn how to hunt. Foraging is looking for vegetation to eat, but when it comes to hunting, they have to go after moving objects. You don't hunt stuff that's just sitting there. One of the many things that makes a brown bear a good hunter is their sense of smell. They can smell food for miles away. They can also run pretty fast when they want to. They can go 30, 35 miles an hour, so they can catch some pretty fast game. They also have incredibly powerful jaws, so when they latch onto something, it's really hard for that something to get away from them. When they hunt, they'll go after squirrel, rabbit, deer, and occasionally a big animal like caribou. Come on, boys. Come on, Bob. Animals in captivity tend to be sedentary. They don't move around a whole lot. And Bob and Screech are the same way. That's a good boy, Screech. Here in Indiana, we have squirrels, rabbits, white tail fawns. There's plenty of food here. Bob and Screech aren't used to being around other animals, so they may be scared if I use real game. So I have to use my imagination to come up with some hunting lessons. And the first step is the trigger chase response. So I have to give them something to chase. And that something is me. Come on, you freak. Oh boy, here they come. How's that foot, Bob? Screech! Hey! <laughs> you hit a hole, buddy? That's good, boy! The bears did a great job, so I think they're ready for the next lesson. Oh, boy. Bob and Screech did a great job of chasing me down the hill. But I'm still their mama bear, they're not afraid of me. So the next step is to get out a couple balls I brought to the habitat. Gotta do this thing. Come out. 
These balls were designed for large carnivores. The biggest one here is probably around 55, 60 pounds. This is herd cats. Now these are big toys. You see them at zoos all the time. For lions, tigers, bears, oh my, play with them. I Maybe mean, I'll just already use the big one for now. I'll put the small one in the bushes. So I brought them out here to see if I can't get the bears to chase the balls coming down the hill. So they'll say, I gotta go after it. It's got my interest. So then maybe if they see a white tail fall, they'll go after the white tail fall. Man, we thought I'd be doing this at 50 years old. Bob, screech! Hey! Bob, screech! Hey, 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 hey! Ooh, come on! Ooh, ooh. Hey, Bob! Hey, screech! See what I got, Screecher? It's okay, it won't hurt you. See what we got? It's okay. Come on. It's okay, you big baby. My hope is that Bob and Screech both go with all enthusiasm after these balls, and they try to grab them, try to tear them up, and I hope they try to nudge each other out of the way to get it. It's all good. See that, Bob? See it? While using this ball may seem like fun and games, it's not. If the only food available to these guys is prey, and they won't chase after it, they won't survive, because prey will not come to them. I had to have something that they could look out out here that's not natural looking. They think that sticks out out here in the trees and the grass, and now I want to go after it. Good. Here you go. Play with it. Play with it. Now, when I roll these balls down the hill and I get in the middle of them, I very well could become a victim. You like that? Huh? Guess what it is? It's a rabbit. It's a rabbit. Give me that. Got me. The ball. I don't want to get hammered by Bob or Street. I don't want bit. I don't want clawed. I don't want killed. But I also know that there's no way of really doing this unless I get hands on. I just hope hands don't come off. Dup, 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 dup. I like that. He's claiming it. Claiming the ball is a really good sign. It shows that they're interested in it, and uh, they're not afraid of it. Like that. Bye-bye. Come on. Come on. Whose is it now? Come on. Okay, you guys did good. I'm happy with the first run, but they could be actually chasing me instead of the ball. So next time I won't run with them. Up, 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 up. Let me have it. Here you going, Bob? I gotta give this another try. Come on, 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 Bob. Wait for your brother. Wait for your brother. Bite it. Don't bite it. Don't bite it. Don't bite it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm on. Now you scared of it because it's moving? Are you scared of it? Go get it. Go get it. He's going to kill you. I'm uh, a little bummed out about their reaction to the ball. I think that once it moved, now it became alive again. And they were afraid of it because it was alive. You're a bear. Have you looked at your passport? Have you looked at your birth certificate? You're a bear, bud. I can't believe that Screech is afraid of the ball. I expect that out of Bob, but this really isn't going the way I thought it would. These guys are easily intimidated. Maybe the big brown ball scared them. So I decided to introduce the red ball. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Come on, let's go get it. Come on. Seems like they're doing better with the smaller ball. They like it. I try to get this ball away from them. I want to take it back up the hill and roll it. I'd like to have that. You're claiming it. You claim it when it stops. I have a hard time getting that away from them. That'd be a show closer right there. So I'm gonna wait till they get their paws off of it. Maybe try to distract them a little bit. They almost like you to challenge them. Easy. You gonna swap me? Look at my wallet. Look, look, there's money in it. Look, look. If I gotta get their attention. Sometimes I have to improvise. So I just pull out whatever I have handy at the time. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh, that's good. Look. Look at that. So I'm teaching Bob and Screech how to hunt. I'm using some balls to try to trigger their chase response. Come on, let's go get it. Come on. But they don't want to chase them. I have a hard time getting that away from them. So I'm gonna try to distract them a little bit. So I want to take it back up the hill and roll it again. Look at my wallet. Look. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh, that's good. Look. 
Look at that. You son of a gun! <laughs> Quick! As I'm trying to teach them to go out there and throw some elbows and get in the mix and be dominant, I'm also putting myself in that situation to where there's a possibility I could get hurt. I have to be on my guard to stay one step ahead of these guys, or this whole experiment could be over. Try not to pick fights, I'm gonna lose. I'd lose this one. The fact that they're claiming the red ball indicates to me that they have what it takes, that once they hunt an animal, that they can claim it, they can hang on to it. Killing it's one thing, taking it down is one thing. You gotta take control of that so another animal doesn't come along, another bear doesn't come along and take it away from you. You don't wanna work for nothing. Good, you like it, don't you? Look, look at that, you're in the circus. You don't even know it. This red ball is now an animal, and I take it away, they're gonna wanna claim it right back from me. I just wish I came up with a safer way to get these balls back. I'd like to have that. Thank you. I'm going uphill. Come on. Come on. Nope. Come on, Screech. How bad you want it? How bad you want it? Hey, Bob. Don't. 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 Are you ready? Come on. That's a gutter ball. Seems like they just have these little spurts of energy, then they're done. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think Screech is getting a little frustrated going after the ball. And that could turn into anger pretty quickly. So I need to watch my back. The bears just seem to want to claim the ball and to play with it. They don't really want to chase it. I think they figured out there's really no reward. So there's really no incentive for them to try to go after it. There you go. It's essential for their survival that they know how to hunt, but I can't put all the blame on them for this. I need to make sure that my next hunting lesson will trigger their predatory instincts. Good, good boy. In order to start my next hunting lesson, I'm gonna need some equipment, but it's not coming till tomorrow. So today I'm gonna leave the bears alone in the habitat for a few hours. I just gotta start letting the bears get used to being away from me for longer and longer periods of time, just like it's gonna be in the wilderness. My friend Larry owns the 900 acres that the habitat sits on. And he told me there's quite a few big ponds around here. So if I head about a mile north, I should run into one. There's no drive through out here. But there's no drive-bys either. I feel like I've been walking for hours. There's got to be a pond. Whew, mercy. It is hot out here. It's humid. Whew, it's hot. Wasn't paying attention where I was. I was too focused on trying to find a, a fishing hole. I'm not really seeing any landmarks right now or anything that really sticks out. I'm a pretty perceptive guy. But all this just kind of blends together. And this stuff's dense. I didn't bring enough water. And uh, right now, I, I can't afford to be lost for too awfully long. If I'm out here after dark, I don't think I'll find my way back. I hate to admit it, I'm lost. I feel like I've been walking for hours. I hate to admit it, I'm lost. I'm not really seeing anything that really sticks out. All this just kind of blends together. I feel like a idiot. Let's go this way. Yeah, I can see some of the vegetation, the weeds and stuff we stopped down, so this is the way. No food, but we're not lost. This is good. And look at this. Is it? Those are quail eggs. Better known as Jeff's Dinner. It's not enough there for Bob and Screech. It's enough there for me. Things are looking up. Was lost. Found my way out. Now I've got some eggs to take back. These little guys actually have more protein in them than chicken eggs. All right. It'll be a tasty little morsel. Things are looking up now. Wear a guy out.
grew up watching Grizzly Adams, read up a lot on the real Grizzly Adams. You have to admire a man who could live in the wilderness, live off the land with bears. The real Grizzly Adams was a, an important inspiration to me. I don't believe I even knew there was a real Grizzly Adams until after I got my first bear, Grismo. And I learned a lot about him, and I've researched whatever I could through old uh, newspaper articles and, and, and such. But I find him inspiring because he was a pioneer. He didn't have anybody to look at and say, hey, what do you do with that grizzly bear? He's one of the first guys to ever take a grizzly bear and hand raise it. And uh, he was doing this in the 1850s. I respected him so much that when I was traveling, showing bears in Massachusetts, I decided to go to Grizzly Adams' gravesite. And I wanted to capture a piece of history, so I actually pushed some clay into it many years ago, back in the 90s. And uh, I think the Grizzly Adams got his company from wild animals and from nature, and I, I feel that I'm similar to him in that respect. How many people have actually had grizzly bears as friends? So I really feel some type of connection to the real Grizzly Adams. Kind of a kindred spirit. Get my eggs back, check on the bears, and make me a meal. Hey, Bob! Hey, Screech! Hey! Hey! Hey, Bob! Hey, Screech! Hey, guys! There you are. So did you guys have a good time? You like me leaving you alone? But it looks like they did just fine without me. This habitat is the biggest area that Bob and Screech have ever known. But there's a few areas in here that they consider their favorites. And that's where they spend most of their time at. They're just so independent now. Too busy out there running the hills. The more that I leave them alone by themselves here in the habitat, the harder it's gonna be for me to track their progress. But since my goal is to release them in the wilderness like Alaska or Canada, see guys, it's something I have to do. Just go down here and eat me something. You guys will eat your grass. Mm, that smells good. When I first came out here, it was all about Bob and Screech. But now I'm kind of rewilding myself, you know, living off the land and so used to having everything in the fridge, in the cabinet. I'm not going off the grid necessarily by doing this, but I am getting back in touch with, I think, uh, who I would have been 100 years ago. People say that they were born at the wrong time. I don't subscribe to that at all. I believe you were born when you were supposed to be born. I believe God had an appointed time for me to be born. So I don't believe I should have been born in 1812, like Grizzly Adams. Grizzly Adams died because he didn't have any antibiotics. I'm glad for antibiotics. But it is a far cry from sitting on my couch. When I started raising bears, I just wanted to hang out with them. So I realized being out here that this was the dream I originally had, just hang out in the woods with them. But I'm not hanging out with them out here for the long term. I'm hanging out with them to set them loose. A mama bear will chase her cubs off, and she'll cut those apron strings. It just comes natural for her. I think she's programmed that way. But I'm a human being, and I rescued Bob and Screech when they were just a few days old. I bottle fed them. And when I cut those apron strings, it's going to be very tough because human beings aren't really designed just to break off those relationships. There's emotional attachments and emotional ties. This is definitely going to be one of the hardest things I ever have to do in my life. But what keeps me going is knowing that it's the best thing for Bob and Screech. But if they're ever going to be ready to be moved out of the habitat and be released into the wilderness, i got to get back to the hunting lessons. I have a friend coming tomorrow, and I have something big planned. My buddy Fritz is coming out to bring me a package. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Fritz. Fritz owns a zip line business, and he's dropping off some stuff for my next hunting lesson. Watch this wire is hot. I All see right. you, buddy. Hey, good to see you, too. Jeff's a little crazy, you know? First time I saw Jeff, he was walking a bear on a leash down the road. He's a good guy, and he's fun to be around, but boy, he's got some ideas that are out there. What are you, you going to do with the, a zip line out here? I just want to get them in shape, and I want to teach them that they need to run after meat, run after food. OK. The zip line is part of my hunting exercise. I want to tie some meat to it, get some speed behind it, run it down the hill, let Bob and Screech go after it, and hopefully they get a good reward. And they'll learn, hey, you got to chase the food. You want meat? Chase it. And unlike with the balls, if they take off after it and they chase it and they get the meat, they get the reward, and they're happy, just like in the wild. And without the zip line, it would be very dangerous for me to be running with the meat in my hand. This is one of your out there ideas. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't care if everybody thinks I'm nuts. That's what it is. I just brought with me along with that box of consensus. You're nuts, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There's always going to be naysayers, and most people are going to think I'm a little off because I have bears. I'm used to criticism. Hey, 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 let's go. 
Guys can swim later. Come on, let's work. I need to get these boys out of this mud hole because this is exactly where that zip line is going to stop. Guys, today's not your day off. You're going to learn how to hunt. You're sitting right where I need to put the zip line. Come on, out of the mud hole. Let's go. Come on. If the bears are hot and they're trying to cool off, it can be really hard trying to get them to move. Using the camera is a good way to coax them to follow me, but it can be dangerous. Last time I did this, Bob gave me a nasty swipe. You need to go, okay? Ow, ah! I tried to motivate him to run, and he took a swat at it, and I just had my hand there in the way. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Come on, Bob. So maybe I'm the crazy one. He won't move for that ball. Boy, he likes to move for that camera when it's in his face. I learned a while back that when I put a camera in Bob's face, it really gets him moving. Maybe he doesn't like the reflection off the lens. Then again, maybe he's just camera shy. Yeah. That got me muddy. You started to move. Come on, Bob, let's go. Look, he's stopping. He's thinking, how can I get it? Acts like he's not paying attention to it. This may seem like I'm taunting the bears, but it's just another way of triggering their instincts. He may just swap, but I have to be prepared in case he wants to chase. I know what you're gonna do. I know what you're gonna do. I know what you're gonna do. Ooh, came with the right paw. Thought you were left-handed. Mixing it up, huh? There you go. You're up. Come on. <laughs> Freaking disgusting. Well, that's not working. I sure don't want to get him all fired up. <laughs> Let's go play again, guys. <laughs> I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I don't want his time to back off. Come on. You cooled off. <laughs> maybe I can lure Screech out first, and uh, maybe Bob will follow him. Come on, Screech. Good day, Screecher. Follow Daddy. Bob, come on, bud. Come on, boy! Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on. Good boys. Good boys. Hey, 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 hey! Bob, go swimming. Now that they're out of the mud hole, I gotta keep them distracted long enough that I can get this zip line put up. I think they'll be happy in the creek. Hopefully they'll cool off and take a bath. I'm gonna get out of here. I picked this area. I'm gonna use this tree right here to go straight down to the tree down by the water hole. I didn't really want to go down this hill for the balls, but I think that probably go down the hill for the food that attached to this zip line. Chris just shows up and he thinks I'm a little crazy because I have a zip line and I have some ideas with my bears. You know, I may be mad, but there's a method to my madness. That's cool, and that cable already broke, so I can't roll it down the hill very well. A long way to go. I hate to cry, but I'll tell you what. It's miserable out here right now. It's hot. Mosquitoes are all over me. My spool broke from the cable. It's taking more strength than I actually have. And I need an extra set of hands. I need some help. I'm not going to get it. And the time is ticking. I got to get this zip line up before Bob and Screech come back from the creek. I don't want them destroying this thing. Man, I got to hurry. I'm going to be down here before I get this thing set up. Hear him splashing down the creek. Got a little time left. This zip line's kind of giving me headaches right now. I'm having to wrestle this cable trying to get it high enough up a tree. If I was at the house, I could have somebody help me. I wouldn't have the bears out. I just put them up, get the job done, then let them out. That's not an option here. But as hard as this is, it's necessary. I have to do this for Bob and Screech. I want to make sure that I at least give them all the skills necessary to survive on their own. All right, time to give this zip line a try. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on. Good boy. Come on. In order for this to be a success, I think Bob and Screech have to really be interested in the meat and have to run after that zip line. If they let the zip line stop and they walk down to it, stand up to get the meat, that's interest. That's not hunting. That's just interest. Look at this, Bob. Look at this, Screech. 
Bob. Look at this. The meat that I'm using is venison. It's deer meat. A couple weeks ago, I decided to introduce wild game to Bob and Screech so they'd acquire a taste for it. This one's for you, Screech. Got one for you, Bob. Come here. Screech is over there eating venison for the first time. He's enjoying it, acting like a bear. Bob's over here playing with a log. Woo hoo ha ha. I just, that's why you don't insult your bears. Take a swat at your face. Bob wasn't interested in the meat, but that's been the case with the fishing and the foraging, too. It takes him a little bit longer to get interested in working for his food. You guys want to follow that? Here. Today, I expect Screech to be the first one to go for the venison. Probably gonna grab it, aren't you, Bob? Here. Go get it, go get it, come on. Come on. See this, look at this. Look at that. Come on. Hey. You're supposed to chase it. He's afraid of it. This is majorly disappointing. This is the second time that these guys have both failed on something together. I mean, that both bears just wouldn't have anything to do with. It's the balls, now it's the zip line, which is really strange because Screech has done so well with my other lessons. This is a huge step backwards for him. If these guys don't have the skills to hunt, they don't have the skills to make it out in the wild. Come on, Bob. Look at that. I'm trying to activate Bob the Screech's chase response, so I'm using a zip line with some meat on it. You gotta go after it. So far, they've had no interest in chasing it, but I'm not giving up yet. Here it comes, hey! Here it comes! Here it comes! Go get it! Go! Come on, lazy! Man, you guys need to run. You can't just reach out and try to grab it. Yeah, high five. You need to reach out there and grab it. They're getting pretty good at foraging on their own, but a wild bear has to be able to put thousands of calories away a day to get ready for winter. And the best way to get the necessary protein and other nutrients is to eat game. I'm coming back, guys. Stay there. Man, there's just, just no energy. These guys just aren't exerting themselves. They're not expending any energy whatsoever to try to go after this meat. I'm the only one out of the three of us getting any exercise out of this zip line. I had to set it up. Now I have to chase it down and bring it back and chase it down. The bears aren't going after it. Screech, coming at you. Come on, buddy, go for it. That's it. That's all you got. But this meat doesn't mean much to him right now. Bob's over there eating a salad. I don't know. Come on. This is the worst failure I've had with the bears. They won't run. They're not interested in the meat. I'm beginning to wonder, am I doing this for them or for me? Bob, Screech, hey! But I do know that hunting is an important skill, and I won't be able to release them if I don't think they can do it. Come on, guys. Don't go back to the creek. We got work to do. Bob, Screech, hey, hey. Here it comes. Hey, hey, come on, Bob, Screech. Hey! Oh my gosh, there's gotta be a reason they didn't go after that meat. Maybe something's uh, really wrong with them. Bob, Screech! Hey! I don't know why the bears didn't go after the meat. I'm still supplementing their diets a little bit, but it's a lot less than it used to be. If they've been fishing and foraging, they're just eating vegetation and eating fish. But this is red meat. That's what bears love. That's what brown bears love. I don't know why they won't go for it. Well, the old joke is, there's a bear poop in the woods. And I know two bears that do poop in the woods, but I don't know where they pooped at. Now that these guys are becoming more independent and they're moving around the habitat, I can't keep up with them all the time. So I can't always observe what they're eating. And they could be eating at night when I'm asleep. The only way for me to really try to determine what they've been eating is to look at their scat. So I can't keep up with the bears, but I can keep up with their poop. So I just need to start looking for it and digging through it. I don't have any way of really analyzing their poo, but I just kind of want to see if it's got a lot of vegetation in it or any fish bones. If I'm right and I look through their scat and I see signs that they've been hunting on their own, I'll consider this whole ordeal a success. Other than the fact I lost five or six pounds in water weight running up and down that hill in this terrible humidity and heat. Something right there. 
couldn't even see it. I saw the flies. <clears throat> Just a lot of grass in there. Bears are apex carnivores, especially these grizzlies. So prey animals, especially small prey animals, are probably afraid of them instinctively. And that's probably why I'm not seeing anything around here. Some kind of hair. I don't know if that's some rabbit fur. Part of a, a deer. They, uh, they would have, I would have known if they killed a deer out here. They're really not quick enough to get a rabbit, I wouldn't imagine. Unless they just found one, found a baby. But there's definitely some fur in there. I don't know what kind of hair that is. I know that the hair in the bear scat is not Bob's reaches. It doesn't match their hair, so I know it's prey. But they've got some hair in there, so obviously they're eating some other meat. Maybe a baby rabbit they got a hold of. Bob's reach probably know a lot of things just from birth that I wouldn't have to teach them. This is nature kicking in. They're becoming bears. That's what I'm here for. That's what's happening. I just can't take the credit for it. So no wonder they, they didn't want any of that meat from the zip line. They're getting their meat somewhere else. Chasing that zip line's hard work out in the hot sun, so it's all about food. No, their stomachs are their, uh, Bank account. When the bank account's full, they don't have to go to work. Just lie around. This is a really good indication that the bears have been learning how to hunt on their own. But there is just way too much at stake here for me to just consider this a success without following up on it. It's me. Hey guys, it's me. The fur in their scat tells me the Bob and Screech have been eating some game, but I want to see if I can catch them hunting at night. Go on, go do your thing. No matter what, it seems that Bob and Screech know a lot more than I'm giving them credit for. Good night, boys. I'll see you tomorrow. Next time on Project Grizzly. Would you be willing to drive this inside of here? What, the bears? One of the main things the bears need to learn to do is to dig a den. So I'm bringing in a big plastic culvert pipe. Go ahead. I'm having one delivered here. Go. And I want to see if I can get the boys to get in this dark, tight area. You got to learn to get underground, guys. Don't get all crazy on me, boy. 